Nowadays, it seems that almost every single male CEO out there has a music career. Some people might say that this is a full-fledged trend that doesn't seem to end. Others are delighted that male CEO are actually taking a step forward and venturing towards an industry that was once impossible to get into. And while there is a lot of talk about whether or not male CEO should make their debuts in the music industry, truth is, there is no shortage of great music coming from the most recent generation of CU talents, those born in the late 80s, early 90s. Of course, there is still a lot to be desired by some, but what is it that makes male CU want to make a debut in the music industry? Today, I will dive into some of the various reasons that might be behind the CU's decision to kick off a career in music. So let's get started with the second episode of CU Lounge and check those reasons out. Welcome to CU Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Why do male CU kick off careers in the music industry? This actually is a theme that touches slightly upon controversial territory. Like I mentioned in the intro, there are fans of Mel CU that absolutely loathe the fact that Mel CU are making their debuts, sometimes with barely any credits in anime or popularity at all to justify a debut. At the same time, There are fans that absolutely love the wide variety of male CU singers that we now have. But is there really a variety? As I get to follow multiple 2D idol projects, bands and male CU as solo artists, actually over 100 artists that I follow closely for reviewing purposes, there are times in which I start listening to a release and instantly the words that leave my mouth are Again with this sound? Variety is a rather questionable thing in the music industry when it comes to male CU being artists. There are few that stand out for their unique take on music genres or how they really ace a particular style and people know them for that. Then there are all the others that might have quality but unfortunately their producing teams are too lazy at times to create something that will make them stand out and thus create a less homogeneous pool of artists. But that's not what we are going to talk about today. We're going to the root of it. The reasons why male CU might want to join the music industry. A note, of course, that these are not exhaustive. Who knows what other reasons might be behind your favorite male CU making his debut as a singer. But have into attention as these are the most common listed or hinted by male CEO in their interviews. There are also two reasons that I am speculating, taking into account how the CEO industry is not that big of a fan of freedom. So why would CEO join the music industry? It's their passion. If you read some interviews by male CEO when they talk about their roots, you'll be surprised at how many actually had the band when they were in high school or how many wanted to be singers if being a voice actor didn't pan out in the end. Most of the male CU come from an artistic background, be it fine arts, literature, dance or music. So of course, when most male CU join the music industry, they will instantly tell the press about their background, as if people will instantly judge them for their intentions. Well, I believe that those that have a passion for music have the purest of reasons to join the industry. Male CU focus entirely on voice acting, but when given the opportunity to do yet another thing they love, and in some cases always loved, they embrace it and go all out with it. Good examples include Kento Ito, who was a Vocaloid producer, Yoshiki Nakajima, who basically has a background in drawing as well as is a massive geek about music, Soma Saito, who had a band when he was a teen, always dreamt of having his own band and, if being a CU hadn't worked out for him, it would be one of two things. 
a musician or an author. And if that isn't enough to impress you, have in mind that he has a college degree in literature. Yamo Uchida, that danced and sang since he was a kid, much due to his grandparents and sister's influence, and always wanted to do something involving both things. Shunichi Toki, who used to perform at jazz bars with his dad. Shugo Nakamura also had the band when he was a teen and wanted to be a musician when he moved to Tokyo. All these male CU saw their popularity rising and were offered a contract by a music label, thus beginning their journey in the music industry. And they are good examples of male CU whose intentions are the purest, and you can tell by their performances and involvement in the creative process just how much they love what they are doing as solo artists. Of course, there are plenty of other examples, but guys, the list would get pretty long and we don't have all the time to dive into that. Reason 2. Steady source of income. The income CU receive per episode, page or minute is not always enough to pay for all expenses they have to incur, be it transportation, living expenses, classes, food and more. Joining the music industry presents itself as a fantastic opportunity for male CU as they can get a consistent revenue stream, which is basically royalties received on a monthly or yearly basis, and all they actually need to earn royalties is for people to play their song or request it at karaoke or on radio stations. Being a solo artist or being a part of a band is more lucrative than having a couple of supporting roles. Attention that CU are paid per episode they appear in, not for the whole series. And a minor one here and there. Taking into account how many CU make their debuts every year, and competition gets increasingly difficult, it already was to begin with, but now it's simply unforgiving, the music industry is a good getaway from all of that and can serve as a complement to their earnings doing voice acting work. There are actually some male CU that focus more on music than on voice acting right now. Mamoru Miyano is a perfect example of that, as his load of work in voice acting, especially in anime, is nowhere near what it was a couple of years ago, whereas his music work is more frequent than ever. If you ask me, I believe that joining the music industry as a means to make up for their expenses or as an extra source of revenue is a pretty acceptable reason. Now we get to the shady reasons, because humans are greedy and music labels are, well, in the business to make money, nothing more. Reason number three, a gimmick to cash in on popularity. Well, I'm not a fan of this uh, reason and usually it doesn't lead to good music at all, just passable music and sometimes pretty awful. But of course this is subjective, so I leave the, that open for you to judge each artist on whether or not they are cashing in on popularity. But let's kick off this uh, section, which will be quite long in comparison with the other reasons. Well, the music industry, as you all know, is an industry. And of course, the CU industry is, you got it, an industry. All of this to say that both strive to make money out of something or someone. In most cases, venturing to the music industry might not be the thing that a male CU wants, and there are some cases in which male CU note that they don't want to join the music industry, either because they are not confident, they don't want to stray away from voice acting, or they just find it a chore. At the same time, there are male CU that notice that their popularity is considerable, and they are aware that they have loyal fans that will, no matter what, purchase everything they release, so that they can gamble and join the music industry, usually as solo acts. Why usually as solo acts and not bands? Now that's where things get a little bit grey. So bear with me for this explanation, but this is my personal take on this issue. You will often find male CU making their debuts as solo acts because, let's be honest, if you write your music and lyrics, you get almost all royalties to yourself. 
so the paycheck is bigger. But there are only very few male CEO that actually write and compose all or most of their music. Now, some people will say, but they are singers, they don't have to compose or write. Which is a valid point. However, if you notice, there have been a lot of solo debuts in the past decade. Now, out of those solo debuts, how many male CEO actually write and compose their stuff? Not many. But those that do, they sound unique among the flock, and those are actually the best solo artists you have among Miles AU. Most of them are currently the most successful or known singers among Seiyu. They are challenging themselves and doing something they envisioned for their solo career, be it the lyrics, the imagery, the instrumentals, the message behind their project, the whole deal behind a certain series of releases, for example. At the same time, I am not a fan of that weird idea that some fans usually shove on others when you don't like their favorites music. That happens to me quite a lot because I review music with some frequency and of course I expose my opinions to the public. You know that popular misconception of but they are good, or alternatively, they are relevant. Just look at their sales numbers. My friends, selling a lot of CDs is not a synonym of releasing quality music, especially when you take into account that what is usually popular are hearwarm pop songs with no content and just a catchy hook. Or because that CU is part of a 2D idol project, the reasons go on and on. However, selling a lot is a synonym of being popular or having fanatic fans that will purchase more than two copies, the regular and limited versions of his CD. I won't dive more on this topic because I know that people will get a bit touchy. So back to where I was, most of the times um, I'll see you don't play a part in their music because they are not allowed by their music labels to do so. Or simply because they are not confident in their skills. They actually want to do that, but they don't have the confidence to write lyrics or compose a song because they think they don't have what is worth. So they basically just sing and they stick to it. Uh, if called to participate, of course, they will and occasionally write lyrics for a song of theirs. Then there is the other half. And this is the grey zone, of course. The ones that don't get involved because, honestly, they are just trying to cash in on their popularity. And thus, they only release music yearly and have no involvement whatsoever in their music. Sometimes they might pitch in a lyric or two for a project because they tell everyone that it is a special project. But you can tell by their performances how detached they are about their music and the whole deal about their persona as a singer. They are just singing as it was just another job, not as if it was their passion. And we can tell that. At least those slightly more sensible to music will notice those nuances in which a singer is not really connecting with the music they are performing or that something is odd about the direction that was given to him about how to understand the lyrics and put forth those emotions while performing. That happens and what we get is a sound that everyone else has, uh, regardless of popularity, that uh, weak, generic pop sound that only shifts with trends, uh, regardless of that almost all males say you are performing that genre or that type of music and they really don't stand out much between them. And that's why I believe that most male CU don't make their debuts as part of a band or don't put enough effort as solo acts. I believe, of course, seeing the other side of the, the issue, that bands have a different type of commitment. You don't create a band when you're a voice actor if you're not passionate about it. Being in a band is something that, in a way, shows that they want to be involved in the music-making process. 
Believe me, being in a band is really about to see you's passion and not at all a gimmick to cash in on popularity. Although that usually ends up being a consequence of creating a band and being successful at it. But in that case, it is a result of hard work, not a simple cashing in on something that that day already had to begin with, which was popularity. Gran Rodeo, Screen Mode, Old Codex and most recently Sir Vanity are good examples of projects created from the CU's passion for music, not as gimmicks to cash in on popularity. You can feel their passion by how involved they are in their work, by how exciting their performances are, or just the natural happiness that they show while performing. Passion is a difficult feeling to fake and still sound plausible while doing it. Especially in music, you notice right away when the singer was not feeling those lyrics at all, or when the singer was not involved at all in music, because their performance sounds detached no matter how much direction was given to him. In a band, that usually doesn't happen. And yes, I mentioned Sir Vanity. Some people will say, but Yuichiro Mehara is cashing in on his popularity as an Ike Man Seiyu. Which is a valid point, especially when he mentioned back in the day that he wasn't interested in joining the music industry. However, I would only raise that point if he was making a solo debut. Which would mean that something was odd about his first statement about not being interested in joining the music industry. Not in this case. He simply joined hands with Yoshiki Nakajima, which is a close friend of his, and might even have been convinced by Nakajima to join him uh, in a band project. You can tell by their music, at least, how passionate they are about rock, so kicking off a band was just a matter of time. Sir Vanity only recently debuted and we only have one single to judge their seriousness about making music. I leave my review in the description below in case you're curious. Yet, I believe they show the right motivation besides what others might think. I noticed at the same time that some people are on the fence about them, especially with that odd debut announcement on April Fools. That was weird, to say the least, um, but I will suggest you to try to put that aside and enjoy their music, because even if they are kidding and doing it for giggles, their quality is pretty impressive. But enough about Sir Vanity, let's check the next reason. Reason number four. Pressured by their talent agencies. This can happen and this is pretty messed up. As some of you might not know, talent agencies like Awani Production, 81 Produce, Arts Vision, I'm Enterprise, and many more, they all take a percentage from the money a CEO earns in each job they complete. So the more work a CEO does, the more revenue they make in managing commissions, which is the term that I believe they use for that. If it's wrong, please correct me in the comments. So you see where I'm heading with this. Pressuring a male CEO to make their debut in the music industry is a great way for the talent agencies to cash in even more on their talents. It is not ethical, but that's the way some talent agencies operate. Now, I am not saying that there are obvious cases of that, much because I am not working in the industry, but that might not be too far from reality, especially for male CEO from smaller agencies as those have a, a shorter stream of work opportunities for their talents, thus any drop of money they can get, they will take it. It also happens when talent agencies notice that one of their talents is being praised for their singing into the idol projects or, and this one is really the worst, because of the CU's good looks, which is something that is highly subjective. As if looks equaled being good singers, but let's forget about that logic or lack thereof. Reason number five, riding the wave just for the sake of it. Well, that's 
unfortunate to begin with, but when money is on the table or the possibility of having money is on the table, some people just don't care about anything else. So if you noticed, back in 2017, suddenly every male CU out there was making their debut and most were being met with success, at least at some level. There were almost monthly news about debuts in the music industry between 2017 and 2019. We went from a music industry with few players to a music industry crowded with similar acts and screaming lack of variety. While 2017 to 2019 was a period that had quite a few massive talents in the mix, Makoto Furukawa, Toshiki Mazuda, Soma Saito, Yuma Uchida, Shunichi Toki, Shugo Nakamura, Tasuko Hatanaka, there were also a couple of not so good debuts and even some pretty odd ones uh, given their lack of popularity to begin with. Why odd ones? Think with me from a business perspective just to understand this point, okay? So the concept is, you and I are mostly you that are not that popular and we are trying hard to leave a mark in the CU industry by any means necessary. We notice that our fellow male CU are making their debuts in the music industry and are being successful. And thus, we start looking for a music label. And we eventually settle for one that actually saw in us an opportunity to earn money, so it's a win-win situation for both, at least on paper. How many fans do we have if we are not that popular? For this example, let's just say we have 10,000 fans, which is quite a lot. Out of those, for sure, some will be against us making a solo debut, or they might not even be interested at all. Perhaps because they don't like music, or they just don't follow you because of that to begin with. Remember, people support male CU for different reasons, and some just really don't like music at all. Out of those 10,000 fans, perhaps 1,000 are overseas fans. Those are less likely to purchase our music. We're left with 9,000 fans. Maybe 5,000 of those would be interested in buying our music. Thus, we announced that we will be releasing a pop single. Out of those 5,000, some won't be fans of pop music at all. 3,000 replied to us on Twitter saying that they will for sure purchase our music and they are excited for it. But then, we noticed that we only sold 741 copies. Remember, we are not popular and when it comes to releasing music, we're even less popular. We can't count with a certain number of fans because we're talking about them spending money and some might be minors and not have their own money and others might prefer to pirate your music instead of buying it. If a male CEO isn't popular, he doesn't have many fans. And since being a musician incurs in high production expenses, and you need to sell records in order to pay those, why make a solo debut when at best you will sell 1000 copies of an album, and one hour in a studio in Japan can cost up to 200,000 yen per hour? We have to pay the studio, the producers, the lyricists, the composers, the mixers, the video crew for the music video, the makeup artist, the photographer, publicity at animate stores and the sort. When you're not that famous yet, that's a massive risk to take and it is 90% sure that the male CEO in question won't profit from releasing music. It might improve their visibility, but they might not profit from it. Remember, we're not that popular to begin with. And that's the end of the exercise, you guys can go back to be your graceful selves. Thank you for going into this exercise, but this is really necessary for you to get into the mindset of someone that is trying to break into the industry and isn't aware of how it works at all on the inside. So thank you for joining me on this exercise. Now, if you notice, most male CU make their debuts when they already have a considerable uh, popularity. 
Mamoru Miyano made his solo debut in, in 2007, is actually a case of a male CEO that made a solo debut to cash in on popularity because of Death Note. Yet, you notice that he actually loves what he does since his debut and is involved in part of his music and does so with a care that you only show if you like what you do. Kensho Ono, Soma Saito, Daisuke Ono, Hiroshi Kamiya are all male CU that only made their solo debuts when they had already more than seven years of career as a voice actor and they are extremely lucky of being successful solo artists. They made their solo debuts when it wasn't a gamble to be a solo artist. They had the popularity, they had the fandom, they had the means to do that. That's the sound thing to do. You need some popularity to actually have a prospect of making money to begin with. Now, the others that unfortunately tried to ride the wave, either this past decade or two decades ago, simply failed and are no longer venturing in the music industry. It was a gimmick to begin with, and it didn't pan out well. So does being a singer improve their chances of being successful as voice actors? Or not? I would say not. And the reason is that you have male CU that never made their debuts in the music industry and they are insanely popular and successful as voice actors. Take for example Tomokazu Sugita and Yuichi Nakamura or even Takahiro Sakurai. I know you, what you guys are going to say, but he sang before. He has been refusing singing in uh, 2D idol projects or for anime character songs since the past decade, so he does count as a male CEO that doesn't have a career in the music industry. Uh, so it is not a requirement to join the music industry in order to be successful as a voice actor. However, Having to attention that when you criticize a male CEO for making their debut in the music industry, as their reasons to join in might be pure and not just a way to cash in on popularity or give in to pressure by their talent agencies. There are male CEO that honestly love music, always wanted to have their own band or be solo artists, or wanted to express themselves in a creative way, be it as lyricists, singers, songwriters, dancers, producers. So they joined the music industry not to cash in on anything, but to do what they love. If that brings them popularity, awesome. If that brings them another source of revenue, even better. But remember, there are say you that join the music industry because they love it and they show their talent time and time again to prove it. That was a complex episode. I hope you got an idea as to why MLCU would make a solo debut or a debut in the music industry. Of course, it seems that it is a trend uh, as of late and some CU want to ride the wave. However, the wide majority of male CU love music and they wanted to have a career in the industry. That's why they take their chances and make their debuts. Is it a requirement to be successful? No. Is it a requirement to be popular? That's a different story. Being a singer might play a big role into a CU's popularity. However, I believe male CU shouldn't be pressured to join the music industry just for the sake of it. Success as a singer is not tied to success as a voice actor. So it's perfectly okay to have CU that only focus on doing voice acting work as it is okay for male CU to have their feet in voice acting and music at the same time. So what do you think? Is being a singer a requirement to be popular as a voice actor? Or be successful as a voice actor? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly male CU and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.